National Championship. The Florida Gators have won the Southeastern Conference Championship. Gator Zone is brought to you by Wells Fargo, official retail bank of the Florida Gators. Hey everybody, welcome to another episode of Gator Zone alongside Megan Parler, Jeff Cardozo with you, hanging in the gymnastics practice facility. A lot of stuff to do, a lot of stuff to goof around in here, which we will, I promise you, but uh, no goofing around with our first story because we are going to talk about one of the many gymnasts that are legit. Megan's gonna give her the accolades right now. Yeah, so our next feature, okay, so what Jeff's sitting on, she mm -hmm. was the 2021 SEC Beam Champ. Okay. She was on the SEC Academic Honor Roll, and she was on the SEC All-Freshman Team. So Ellie Lazari, already in year one, was doing amazing things, so I can't even wait to see what she does <laughs> in year two. And it's pretty sweet, and she is from uh, Wheaton, Illinois, so maybe it was just Wheaties. Maybe that's what she uh, grew up doing. Either way, she is really, really good, and we are looking forward to gymnastics season. Before uh, we get up on the beam, let's show you what she does on the beam. Gators gymnast Ellie Lazari is an empathetic leader and inspirational teammate who believes this Florida team is family. Adopted from China at a very young age, she grew her passion for gymnastics through a mommy and me class with her two adopted sisters. I was adopted when I was 18 months old um, from Foshan, China and my two older sisters were adopted as well. We are not biologically related, but I've always viewed my parents as my parents. I never thought anything else. We moved to Warrenville, Illinois, until I would think I was about three. And then we moved to Wheaton, Illinois, where I started gymnastics when I was three years old. Our close family friends said that I had a talent that should be pursued and that they should put me in gymnastics, so they put me in mommy and me classes, and I just love flipping and tumbling, and I've also started out with tumbling classes with my sisters, so I was doing it with them. Gators are in the house. Ellie, she's a very sweet girl. She has a very warm heart. She helps calm me down for a lot of things, like when I'm doing vault bars, beam floor, whatever. I always like looking around, like, where's Ellie? She just has like a very calming spirit about her, and she's very loving. I feel like we have a relationship where we can just come to each other for anything and just talk about anything. She's very, very supportive in, in whatever you want to do, whether it's in gym or out of gym. She's always trying to push people to be their best and always there rooting for whoever. Before college, I would have a lot of confidence issues, but I think knowing that I do have an important role on this team and that I am loved by others, I think that's important to know and I've carried that through today. I mean, you can't say her name without making me smile. Ellie is such a huge part of Gators Gym. She's grown so much as a person and an athlete and a leader on our team, and I honestly can't imagine Gators Gym traveling, competing without her. Family means being there for each other under any given circumstance, whether you're blood related or not. You don't have to be a family member to be family. So I think this team really represents what being a family is. We've gone through so much together, so definitely showing each other love and respect and making sure that each and every one of us is being the best version of each other for this team. And when I'm competing, like just knowing that they do have my back and through their actions and their words to me last year, I just subconsciously know that they do respect me and they love me as a person. I definitely have carried empathy throughout my gymnastics career. Just being there for my teammates no matter what, having them know that I always will have their backs and will understand them as a person, not just as a gymnast. So I think that has definitely shaped me into the teammate and person that I am today. Her passion, along with her definition of a family's unconditional love and respect, has grown her into not only a great leader and great teammate, but the heart and soul of this orange and blue squad. For Gator Zone, I'm Amanda Lapadera. Well, thank you so much to Alex and Amanda for putting that feature together on Ellie. We're going to switch gears to volleyball. Our new assistant coach and recruiting coordinator, Asia Ambler. And Jeff, she played three sports in college at Jacksonville State. Yeah, I thought it was cool. I played four sports in high school, but to do that at the uh, Division I level and be that special, it is uh, it's pretty amazing. And she certainly added so many good things to Mary Wise's staff. So. Let's combine some, some things as well. We are uh, trying to make the most of not having a volleyball net, but I was a uh, 
kind of a down low trampoline cool guy back in high school doing flips and all this stuff. She was a volleyball player, so let's combine right. them now and see what we got. Oh, gee, Jeff. <laughs> Here's more on Asia Ambler. New to this year's volleyball staff is assistant and recruiting coordinator, Asia Ambler. Mary Wise knew exactly who she wanted when the position opened. It was an easy choice. I had uh, my eye on Asia from afar um, as she had been in our league and our paths would cross recruiting. And I would see just how hard she worked, how early she was in the gym, how late she stayed, some of the players that they recruited and who she was in on and we kept get. I would hear all the time, Aisha Ambler, one of the nicest people in the profession and people were just drawn to her. And when Shannon Wells was fortunate enough to get the Virginia job, I made one phone call and that was to Aisha. So how did the former Jacksonville State middle blocker respond when she saw Mary Wise's name pop up on her phone? Oh my God, Mary Wise is calling me. Oh my God, Mary Wise is calling me. It took a while for that to wear off, and then still, I mean, I look up to her as a mentor, so it's, it's huge. Coach Ambler's mentor knows how much Asia is respected in the gym. I think for our players to see somebody as low maintenance as Asia, she can be in any room and asked to do any, any task, and she does it with such a lightness. Um, don't, don't get confused, she's highly competitive, but there's a kindness to her, and, and for our players to see, you can have both. And I think she's a terrific role model, not just for our players, but for our staff. Now, when was the switch from athlete to coach an option in Asia's mind? As a graduate assistant, like you only, playing you know what's on the court, you don't know what they're doing behind the scenes, and I really enjoyed like the office side and like doing the travel the paperwork, the grunt work that some coaches don't like to do. They like the on-court stuff only. So I think that was like, okay, I could see myself doing this for a while. It was when dreams shifted that she knew coaching was in her future. Growing up, I always wanted to be in the Olympics. So I wanted to play whichever sport that would have got me there and play as long as I could. So when my opportunities of playing stopped, that's when coaching was like, okay, I could stay around the sports that I loved. It's no surprise that Aisha enjoys the grunt work, as she says. Coach Wise notices the work ethic that Ambler brings each day. Her ability to grind is, is so impressive. Um, there is n nothing beneath Aisha, what she would do for our program. And her, her attention to detail, whether that's putting together recruiting visits or the recruiting schedule, and then the watching the video and her presence in the gym. She would do anything for this program. And in this short period of time, she's all Gator. And with Aisha Ambler's title, she was responsible for helping bring the newest Gators aboard. Definitely my favorite part about the job. Um, being the recruiting coordinator, you build so many relationships with families and players that, that last a lifetime. Uh, it's awesome to see a player go from a girl in high school to a young woman in college to someone in their professional career, someone that gets engaged and then to the wedding and to the, you know, the announcements of they're having their first child. It's like an awesome experience to watch all of it. The former three sport athletes accomplishments give the current athletes an amazing role model. Just being thankful to be able to be out on the court, just help being healthy, having the mindset to be able to keep pushing and thinking about all that she's been able to do and accomplish in her time, in her years, in just a short amount of time, it's just really inspiring. In just one short year, Aisha Ambler inspires and makes everyone around her better. It's pretty easy to see how valued she is to Florida. Well, another phenomenal job on doing a story by Megan. Not phenomenal, me getting out of here. This is impossible. Can you? Yeah, we've got to get to a out? break here and get to swimming. Let's go. <laughs> Gator Zone is brought to you by Wells Fargo, official retail bank of the Florida Gators, and by Gatorade Thirst Quencher, the proven sports fuel. One of the really cool things about Exact Tech Arena at the Stephen C. O'Connell Center is you can move around and see so many different events. Of course, we were just in gymnastics goofing around, did a volleyball story. You see volleyball and basketball and everything else going on in there. And then uh, 
secretly on the side, the pool, where if you watch the Olympics over the summer, there was a lot of Gators doing some really sweet things. And that's how the season got started, didn't it? Yeah, the home opener here against the Georgia Bulldogs, both the men and women sweeping big wins for them to start this season. The men winning 10 out of the 16 events, a big 180 to 120 win. So uh, a lot of good things happening in the pool. Yeah, certainly so. So uh, let's get right to it. Riley has the recap. Well, it was a great team victory. Great to have the stands, parents, fans back in the stands, of course. And it was, it was an awesome environment. Uh, swimming at the University of Florida, especially at, during dual meets, it's an awesome experience. We have lots of fans come to Gainesville to support the program. I thought uh, our women battled well. The divers were fantastic. Um, obviously, it's a, it's a team sport. It's a swimming and diving um, team, and uh, I think both teams did their jobs today. Well, the highlights, of course, uh, you know, Talia Bates, uh, you know, we, you know not, not only Talia Bates, but I think the entire women's team uh, from top to bottom, they performed at a high level. First big win in a long time, um, and obviously, you know, to kick off a win, both men and women, uh, Florida, Georgia weekend, it's, uh, it's awesome, it's special. Uh, we're going to the, um, the Georgia Tech invite uh, three weeks, and then we have a group uh, that going to the U.S. Open. Um, you know, we're not getting ready totally for those meet, but uh, we want to improve every week. We have lots of work to do, and uh, we're just going to continue to do what we do, doing things the Gator way. Well, thank you so much to Riley and Jeff. We got to get to our second break here okay. on Gator Zone. We got to talk a little Florida football, so let's take a break. And then maybe get some of that nice, cool Florida air. Yeah, you can't beat it, and uh, I bet I'll beat you. Gator Zone is brought to you by Wells Fargo, official retail bank of the Florida Gators, and by Gatorade Thirst Quencher, the proven sports fuel. Hey everyone, and welcome back into Gator Zone. Jeff Cardozo, Megan Parley here, hanging out outside of the beautiful Ben Hill Griffin Stadium on a crisp and wonderful November day. And uh, Jeff, we just finished October. October mm -hmm. is Breast Cancer Awareness Month, and so many people battling breast cancer. And then we have the wonderful stories of them surviving that battle. Yeah, certainly do. And uh, obviously, it's always a tough story, but when you get the happy ending, then it is uh, certainly worth it. But one of the football players, Richie Leonard, mom was diagnosed in April with uh, breast cancer, did everything she could to, to battle through it. Obviously, a great health care down in Tampa, and they uh, made it happen. She got to ring the bell, and now we tell you their story. It took a very long time before I can even say the words, you know, that I have breast cancer. We had actually went home uh, for a break. We had a couple of days off. And I just remember something feeling off about being there, like the, just the vibe and the house back home just was a little different. Starting in January of 2021 of this year, my husband and I went on this weight loss journey together. So by the time April came, I had lost about between 90 and 95 pounds. I said, I see something I think I need to get checked out. It, you know, pretty much looked like maybe a golf ball, like so. Went for the biopsy. My results came back that um, I've been diagnosed with breast cancer. My question was, is this gonna kill me? Am I gonna die from this? Is this going to kill me? All I could think about was my kids. Like, I have to see my son play football in the swamp. I have to see my daughter walk across the stage to get her law degree. She was a little, a little sad at first, you know, kind of a, a more of a, a why, why me thing. But, you know, honestly, she, the way she handled it, she, she straight up told me and my sister, you know, I don't want this to, to affect anything you guys have going on. You know, live your lives, I'm gonna be okay, I'm gonna fight through it. I didn't have time to, you know, sit back and, oh, I'm so sad, and I couldn't just lay down and die. I couldn't just, oh, woe is me. No, I had to get up and I had to, had to fight. They gave me some of the harshest chemotherapy that you can take for breast cancer. The first round of, round of treatments that I had, I had to go um, every two weeks for two months. For the first 72 hours, I couldn't touch anyone, I couldn't hug anyone, I couldn't pick up our puppy. So then after the two months, then I had to go through another three months of chemo, and that was every week. She never missed a beat in our lives. She's still been at every game this year. For somebody to be going through that and, and still have the the empathy to think about other people 
you know, and, and still make it up here to all the games. It's just, it's a, it's a blessing, honestly. It takes everything in me on Saturday, and I wouldn't trade it for the world. If I had to be pushed here in a wheelchair, okay, I'd, I'd be here and be there. So it just, for them, you know, like I say, for them, for him, for my daughter, whatever it is that I need to do to be there, I'm not gonna, I'm gonna be there. I'm not gonna miss a beat. Woohoo! <laughs> I know that there's light at the end of the tunnel, but I just couldn't see it. And then to get there, like it was just an amazing feeling. It was an amazing feeling. It's like, I, I did it. Like I made it to the end, I did it. There were times during like in the middle of it, and I'm like, is this ever gonna be over? Like I would tell my husband, like I'm, I'm, you know, I'm getting tired of this. Like I'm just ready for it to be over. And then when I was able to ring that bell, everybody was so excited. I think Richie probably was the most excited because he kept saying, send me the video, send me the video. I'm ready for it, I'm ready for it. It was it was the best feeling, like, and I was I wasn't even there. Just watching the video, I, it was it was amazing to see. Honestly, it was just one of those things that put a smile on my face. My kids call me every morning, check on me every afternoon, every night. When things like this happen, you appreciate people more. You appreciate them. You appreciate what they do. You appreciate the little the little things because, like I say, it could be a lot different. You know, they could have told me. A, a different scenario where I, you know, might not be here. See, the way, just the way she's handled things, you know, the, the, the poise she's had and, and the way she's, like I said, still hasn't, hasn't missed a beat in her lives. It's like, if she, if she can do that, you know, it makes me feel like I can do anything. You know, her fight is my fight too. Just blessed to even still, to, to even be here right now. Well, Nicole, thank you so much for uh, bringing us that story and, and obviously so touching every time you see that and just puts a smile on your face and uh, really good to see the way it ended up. We got to get to our last break here on Gator Zone, but a guy that puts a smile on many people's faces, he wore number 15. We'll talk to Tim Tebow after the break. Well, Jeff and I found a certain person statue and in three individuals from the 2006 to 2009 football teams who made it into this year's Hall of Fame and Brandon Spikes, Brandon James, and Tim Tebow. And that team won two national championships, two SEC championships, and this guy was the first sophomore to win the Heisman. Yeah, they were pretty good. And, and that night was uh, not good. It was tremendous, great, special. So many great things about those guys coming back as well as the rest of the UF Hall of Famers. I got to, to MC the event, be up there, and just get some great stories out of them. And I think one of the neatest ones was Tim and those two other players, both the Brandons. They all got together and said they want to come to Florida to do something special. And as she just mentioned, they did, winning those couple national titles. So he got inducted that night as the rest of the Hall of Fame class did. But beforehand, Kyle Crooks caught up with the one and only Tim Tebow. Kyle Crooks here with Gator great Tim Tebow. He doesn't need an introduction, but we're going to give him one anyway. And, and Tim, how does it feel to be back? Long list of accolades for you, and now UF Athletics Hall of Famer. How does it sound? Um, you know, it's a huge honor. Um, for me, being a Gator wasn't just for four years. It's really for a lifetime. You know, I was, I was born a Gator, and I'll always be a Gator. And so to be able to come and celebrate with so many people that have impacted um, you know, the athletics here at the University of Florida for a long time is really cool. To be inducted with um, Spikes and B. James is awesome. And we got to hang out earlier. And, you know, it's a huge honor. Um, but so many teammates and players and coaches made it happen. And, you know, I look at this just like a lot of awards, as it really is more of a team award. And uh, we just kind of get to hold of the trophy for a lot of guys. Think of those two national championships that you win here and just the great fans, the great atmospheres, but how about those great teams and just the chemistry of those groups? Yeah, I think that was probably, I mean, there are a lot of special things, but probably what was most special is the chemistry, is the buy-in, the buy-in in the weight room, the buy-in in the practice field, the buy-in in the hard times, you know, to be honest, the buy-in in the suck, you know, in the, the freshman year when we lose to Auburn, um, junior year, we lose to Ole Miss, you know, but we don't really let that, you know, it wasn't a setback. It was actually a setup for us. And I think that was kind of the special part of the makeup is 
more of our, our mentality and our mindset, our heart, and um, kind of the grit of those teams. You know, everybody knows the athleticism and the talent, but there's been a lot of teams with talent. And I think those other things were, were the things that kind of set us apart. Aside from the championships and all the hardware, all the individual accolades that you had, do you have any individual moment that stands out for you? Just maybe a game, not necessarily a national championship, but just a, a specific game that stands out? I think probably my senior year running out of the stadium for the last time um, and on senior day against FSU um, and just beating the brakes off of them and, and we don't like FSU and to beat them for the fourth year in a row. Um, that, that was pretty special. I took the rivalry games a lot more serious and uh, and they were they were important to me and um, you know I still when I look back I, the one that we lost is one against Georgia undefeated against Tennessee undefeated against FSU but we lost that one against Georgia and I, that still haunts me a little bit. Final one Tim, Brandon Spikes and Brandon James you mentioned them before you got to hang out with them last night but seeing your teammates come in here and you're a team guy but to see those guys enter the UF Hall of Fame with you what does that mean? A lot. Um, I don't think I've actually ever beat either one of them. So I lost to, to B. James every time we faced each other in high school, and I lost to Spikes every time we faced each other in the NFL. And uh, so I was grateful for those four years that they're on my team. <laughs> Tim, congratulations again. The legend continues to grow for you, and thanks for the time. Appreciate it. Thank you so much. Go Gators. So again, a big congratulations to Tim Tebow, Brandon Spikes, Brandon James, the rest of the UF Hall of Famers that night. It was a special night. If you have not been to any of those, make sure you do. It's a big night for, uh, for Gator Boosters and certainly uh, a way to support the Gators. And there's other ways you can do it too, right? Yeah, you can always follow the Gators on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, Snapchat, and TikTok. And we still got to get a Jeff TikTok. Well, maybe for the best of. Yeah. yeah. Holidays are coming, so I'll, I'll have some good ones in turkey outfits or Santa suits. Yeah, there we go. We'll make it happen. And uh, hopefully we made it happen well for you guys today. Appreciate you tuning in to another episode of Gator Zone. She's my partner. Megan Parler. And the great camera work of Nicole. I'm Jeff Cardozo. We'll see you next time.